AI can dramatically increase your productivity as an SRE or DevOps engineer. These tools are changing the way we solve problems, where we architect solutions and the way we optimize environments. And the best part is a lot of these tools are currently free or have free options or embedded in the systems that we're already using. Hey, what's up? I'm Adam if you're new here and I'm a site reliability engineer based in London. And in this video, I want to talk about the actionable steps, the actual practical ways that we can use AI as SRE and DevOps engineers. Things like scripting and codification of problems, but also understanding new technologies and methodologies. So let's just get into it. Quick disclaimer before I go any further though, if you're using AI in your own projects and your own solutions and things that you're architecting, no problem, use it to the extent that you wish. However, if you are using this and you are part of an organization, you work for somebody, a company, it is so important that you read the policy that exists on AI and use of AI in that environment and you ask the appropriate person because there may not be a policy in place yet, but you really need to get that clarification and sign off by the organization before you do anything. I do not want somebody telling me they lost their job because they put the whole code base in chat GPT with history on. Now let's actually get into it. Let's start off with codification of problems and best practices. A huge part of being an SRE and a DevOps engineer is automation and automating away toil. That is manual tasks that take away from precious engineering time. However, it can be quite difficult to understand how you take a problem that has been verbalized or written to you or that you have broken down and turn that into code. The codification of that problem can be a big step in automating a task. This is where we can use AI chatbots to help us get to a solution faster. We can give them more problem statements or our general issue at a high level and ask how we may turn this into code, whether we need to use something like Python or whether it's an infrastructure as code related problem and so we're looking for a Terraform solution. The great part about this is even without getting too specific or giving examples of your code base, you can get boilerplate code and outline for you to start working with and layering your solutions on top of that versus starting from absolute scratch with a blank page or blank look in your ID like I don't know where to begin. Not only can you ask questions and use prompts directly into the chatbot, but you can actually integrate some tools into to your IDE or your development environment, things like GitHub Copilot, which can be used to auto complete code and actually write tests for you on the other side, like based on what it can see in the code that you've written. You can imagine the sheer amount of time that you can shave off of automating tasks and actually just writing code when you use this solution here. The next way we can use AI to increase our productivity is actually when we're architecting solutions to certain problems. For example, you may actually have to set up a custom monitoring solution as an SRE or DevOps engineer to get around certain events in your environment that can't easily be tracked by whatever software that you're using to monitor your environment, right? Or perhaps you just want to set something up for a very specific use case and you're not sure how to use the services within the cloud environment you're in to get this done, right? You don't know how to potentially use lambdas with event bridge and SNS in the most optimal way to monitor this environment. Well, this is another way you can use something like chat to build out the high level architecture for your solution. You can give it your problem statement and what you're trying to achieve and then it will provide you with potential options for you to execute that. And the really important thing is then you can use the official documentation in combination with this to build out the solution that specifically meets your needs. But again, you're not starting from scratch and you're not having to think, hmm, I'm not even sure in this environment or in this cloud environment, which services would allow me to achieve that particular outcome. In a similar way, you could use this methodology to build out a pipeline for scratch if you needed to. Maybe even your custom solution needs a pipeline to deploy this effectively if you're not going to integrate it into the pipelines you already have or the code base you already have. And in which case you could ask, given that I would need to pass it through certain environments, I have certain constraints, certain things that I want to ensure in terms of security, how could I build out a pipeline or architect a pipeline to get this solution and to effectively build, test and deploy my code. But leading on from that, it's not just about architecting solutions from scratch. We can also use these tools to help optimize our system, whether it's a cost optimization task, performance optimization, or even security optimization. Let's illustrate this with a cost optimization task. Perhaps you are the SRE that has been tasked with reducing the costs of your AWS environment, but you cannot negatively impact reliability or the stability of the system. How do you do this? Well, perhaps you you've already identified the services that are costing the most, right? Or have the highest impact on overall costs. But you're not quite sure how with the constraints of your system or the needs of your system that you can bring down these costs. Again, you may turn to a chatbot at a very high level and talk about how would I optimize these particular services? Now, given my constraints or some certain information about my system, how could I then optimize and again, ensure reliability and stability? So the key thing here and how AI is playing a role is we're not just saying Google, how you would say reduce the cost of S3 or how you would reduce the of RDS or even something like Lambda, but we're taking in some specific details about our system or at a high level our architecture to get very specific outputs that we can use and form part of our cost optimization solution. And you could apply that same logic to performance or security or anything else that you are trying to optimize for. So the next way we can use AI to increase our productivity is actually around troubleshooting. Now troubleshooting can be a very time consuming task, especially if the issue is embedded or layered under levels of complexity and we're not quite sure why we're seeing the issue 
issues that we are? Why are we seeing them observing these symptoms within our system? Well, here again, we can go back to these chatbots and ask. We can give them information about the symptoms that we're seeing and some level of information about our system as much as we're allowed to and within policies and so forth, or even just omit that information to say, if I had a system that was experiencing these symptoms, what may be the causes of this? And how could I troubleshoot to find out what the actual issue is? And chat can give you some sorts of solutions to these problems or ways to troubleshoot. It may suggest if your issues around databases that you explore certain things with query times, right? Or the actual connection between your database and the layers of your application. Of course, the more context you're able to give these chatbots, the more specific the output will be to you and your issues. But again, we're all working within the constraints of our policies and what's allowed and making sure that we do not breach anything in terms of data security or anything like that. Another way you may troubleshoot is actually bugs in your code. Perhaps you will give chat, if you're allowed, a snippet of your code, not the whole code base, but perhaps you want to just take a look at a particular part of the code that's related to, you know, the errors that you're seeing. What may be the issue with my code, right? And then you can start to troubleshoot in that way as well. I've used AI in my own projects in this way, like when I have issues with the code that I'm building and I can't work out what the issue is, I just paste it into chat and be like, hmm, what's going on? Hello. The next thing I want to talk about is how we can use AI in the platforms that we're already using and employing as SREs and DevOps engineers. This example draws on things like Datadog, Bits AI, and also Amazon Q. So here is effectively how we're using AI in terms of queries and prompts that we're giving it to understand more about our situation. However, when you're using things like Datadog, Bits AI, or Amazon Q, the assistant effectively has awareness of your environment. That means it can pull on data that already exists, say, in your Datadog observability platform or in your Amazon environment, your AWS environment, to give you an answer that's more specific. So now you don't even have to give it, say, I'm doing this, this is the high level architecture, this is my situation, this is the code example. It can actually just pull from what it has access to beyond the scope that you've given it in terms of your security and in terms of your permissions. So effectively, we can query and talk in natural language like I'm talking to you now, but only our AI assistant has awareness of our environment. For example, you could query your Datadog environment using this tool to understand maybe about a past incident or actually an ongoing one. Is there anything going on in my environment that may be related to it, past incidents, alarms that have been triggered, and get more insights there. Or you could actually use it to draft post-mortems after events have happened, right? Things like Datadog Bits AI can actually take the information from the incident and draw up a post-mortem draft for you to start working on. So you have, again, another basis for you to start layering more information and specifics on top of. The final way I want to talk about using AI in terms of your SRE and DevOps productivity is actually around understanding new terminology or new methodologies, and then breaking them down in terms of your environment again. So for example, perhaps you're not familiar with something like chaos engineering. So you can ask chat about chaos engineering, continue to query until you really understand what's going on. And you can go several layers deep, you can even ask for other resources as well. But then you can say, given what we know about chaos engineering and what we know about my high level environment, how may I start to use something like chaos engineering to avoid issues and incidents in the future, right? And again, we have a specific output related to our environment and what it is that we want to know specifically. As you can see, there's quite a few ways you can use AI to improve your productivity as an SRE or DevOps engineer. And there are only more tools and solutions coming out with pretty much each passing day. I will leave resources in the description for you to check out if you want to explore some of these things in more detail. But until then, I will see you in the next video.